What's up guys? So today is gonna be pretty exciting. I'm headed to a trail called Floyd Hill. If you've seen my channel recently, in the past couple months, you've probably seen this trail, but it's super nice and it's a great trail for a good downhill and it's a quick loop, so you can take a few laps if you want, but I'm actually going up here and meeting up with another YouTuber. I'll let you know when I get there. But he got a full suspension bike that he was wanting me to test out. So I'm gonna go test out this full suspension bike on this trail. And this will be my first time riding a full suspension bike on a trail. So I'm kind of excited about it. So I'm headed there now and we're gonna see what we get into today. All right guys, we made it out here to Floyd Hill. Um, I'm out here test riding a bike from a fellow YouTuber. He got me out here testing out the Marin Rip Zone 1. This is the Marin Rip Zone 1. And I'm out here testing this bike out. Um, a fellow YouTuber brought me out here to test this out and see what I think about it. And you might recognize him before. All right, this is uh, Joe from Trail Features. You probably recognize him from YouTube. Just some guy. <laughs> just some guy just I ran some into. Guy, just some 35 year old sad person <laughs> making videos online for strangers. So, Marin Rift Zone 1, this is the new 2020 model. Marin was nice enough to send this to me to review. And what I wanted to do was I heard Maddie was looking at getting a full suspension bike. So I was like, hey, I got a bike that a company sent me. Why don't you try it out? Uh, this is pretty much stock. The only thing that's different is I've already added a dropper post on there because dropper posts are awesome. And then I threw some pedals on there because that usually helps you get up the mountain. But other than that, this bike's pretty much stock. So I'm excited to see what uh, Maddie thinks about it. So we've been on the climb to the top and I've noticed a few differences with this bike than my Roscoe 8. Um, the suspension on the back, I can feel the weight in the bike. And I mean, with the hardtail, you don't have that extra weight. So that's one thing. And these tires are 29 inches. They don't feel too uncomfortable, but the front wheel does seem a little big from what I'm used to. I can't really cut corners like I want to. And these tires are 2.3. 2 2.3. Thanks, Joe. <laughs> 2.3. And I'm used to 2.8. So that's another big difference. I can't really hit loose stuff like I want to carelessly. I got to me more precise on what I'm what I'm hitting and what I'm trying to climb up. Okay, since I've been climbing, I noticed a big difference with the the head angle on this bike. It has a slacker head angle. So when the head angle is kind of, it's out like that. Instead of steep pulled in, it's more pointed outward. So it, at slow speeds, you got to make sure you control the bike or the bike will want to turn in whichever direction the wheel is pointing. So if you're not paying attention, you can lose control. So that's one thing I noticed with this bike compared to the Roscoe. You got to be more precise with the steering and control of the bike because of the slacker head angle. Yeah. This thing is a beast. So I was testing the traction with this bike up that hill. With the rear suspension, it takes a little bit more energy to climb, but you get a little bit better grip on the rear tire. So if I was on my Roscoe, I would have probably been sliding out right there. Good luck. Let's test this out, this climb right here. Oh, 
this thing is a beast at climbing. I'm trying to get up that little section right there. I think I can do it with these 29 inch tires. It was just a little bit harder to cut that corner. So I'm gonna try it again, see if I can do it. Oh, let's go, let's go. <laughs> All right, guys, we made it to the top. So I had a lot of different experiences with this bike. Some, well, mostly good, but the bike is a large. So I had some issues with the bike that I would normally have if it was in my size. But overall, it's a pretty good bike. I love it so far. The fork is pretty decent. I mean, I haven't had to test it out yet because we haven't gone downhill. So when we go downhill, you'll be able to really see what it can do. But it looks, I mean, pretty much like an average uh, fork. It has an air fork, but my Roscoe 8, the fork is definitely way better, but it's not too bad so far. So I'll admit though, this thing is a beast going uphill. It has a wide range cassette. I think it's a it's a one by 11 cassette or gear gear range. So it's definitely enough gears. This thing had a lot of traction going up the hill with this uh, rear suspension. It allows it to grip better in the rear. So it helps you get a lot of grip going uphill. I was at one point, I had the front wheel in the air and I was still getting traction on the back wheel. So that's pretty crazy. So this bike has 130 at the front and 120, 125 travel at the back. So far, this bike has been great. I mean, I haven't had any issues except for one thing. I think it's because of the size, because this is a large, if you can see that right there. And when I'm riding a bike, it feels good in the cockpit, but out front, I just feel like it's a lot of play out front where I can't really get control of the bike the way I want to. But I haven't done it downhill yet, so I want to see how it, how it does downhill. But going uphill, I was noticing I was losing a little bit of uh, control at the front. It'll want to turn side to side. So you really got to pay attention if you're riding a bike that's too big for you. So I'm about 5'8", and this bike is a large. And like I said before, this is the Marin Rift Zone 1 large. So I'm about 5'8", 165. But it feels good in the cockpit, but out front, it just feels a little bit long, but uphill, it seemed like I had a little wiggle and wobble in the front, but downhill, I, that's why I really want to see how it feels. Nice. Oh, yeah, oh. I'm like a kid in like a McDonald's playhouse right now. I'm loving this bike.
That's what I'm talking about. I'm currently back at home now. I was having way too much fun out there to talk as much as I wanted to during the video. But that rip zone one, the Marin, that thing is a beast. I was loving every second of that. First of all, I want to thank Joe from Trail Features for having me out and testing out the Marin Rift Zone 1. I really appreciate that because I've been searching for full suspension bikes. And I thought $4,000, $5,000 was my only price range. I don't know why I thought that because maybe it was because I was just looking at treks. But this really opened my eyes to a whole new variety of bikes. Because the Rift Zone 1, the Marin was, I think he said $1,600. So for $1,600 to step into a full suspension, that thing is a beast. That was actually my first time riding a full suspension bike on an actual trail. So it was eye-opening i now i see why you guys always say if you get a full suspension you'll enjoy it a lot more the hardtail is fun but the full suspension just makes everything much more smooth and less wear and tear on your body you can just shred down as hard as you want to with uh minimal damage to your body at least as long as you don't fall off the bike but uh <laughs> it was a lot of fun i could tell a huge difference with the rear suspension for sure my overall grade on the marine rip zone one it has to be i would say an a the only reason it's not an a plus is because it was a large so when i was climbing up the mountain i was having a, some trouble keeping control of the bike because of the slacker head angle in the front so I couldn't really turn and stuff like I wanted to going uphill, but going downhill, I didn't really see any difference in the size as far as it being too big, but going uphill, that's the only thing that I noticed is I was losing control in the front end when I wasn't, I wouldn't say wasn't paying attention, but when I wasn't always engaged, locked in to where I was going, it would kind of veer off to the left or right. But I will admit with the full suspension bike, it just hit me. I wasn't scared to do anything. I was just hitting drops and going through sections that I normally would take my time in. I don't know what it was, but when I got on that bike, 
it just didn't have me scared of anything. I was I was ready to sin whatever was in front of me. So that's another thing that I noticed about the full suspension compared to the hardtail. I'm not as hesitant on stuff as I am on the hardtail. With that bike, I was fearless. I didn't care. I was just sending it. So that's another thing I like about the full suspension is it just breaks that barrier where you don't really get nervous about other stuff as you normally would with the hardtail. You just go for it because that bike just gives you confidence having that rear suspension because you know it'll be a lot smoother than the hardtail will be. I think that's going to be it for this video. I'm not really good at reviews, I guess. I just, I'm just good at telling you my experience and telling you the stuff I do know. But if you have any questions about it, feel free to comment in the comment section. And if I can't answer it, I'll see if I can get Joe to answer it for me. Or you can go to his uh, YouTube channel and check him out too. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button, comment, subscribe. And I really appreciate you guys watching. Hopefully I can get some more test rides in with the, uh, another couple bikes that I'm interested in. But I'll see you guys in the next video.